So it's March third, March twentieth, two thousand twenty-three. We'll call this reorganizational meeting to order. The first um, order of business is to elect a chairperson. Are there any nominations for chair? Nominate Bruce. Second. Bruce. Any other nominations? <laughs> nominations <laughs> are closed. All is in favor of Bruce. Aye. 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 I'm assuming you're abstaining. Yeah. <laughs> and just can give an eye. Yep, got it. And um, now I turn it back over to Bruce, who is the gavel in front of him. Okay, I guess the next thing we need to nominate and elect a vice chair. Do you want to be vice chair? I'll nominate Kathy. Okay. I'll second. I'll second, I'll second the nomination. All those in favor? Any other nominations? All those in favor, Kathy? Aye. 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 Um, we need to designate an official newspaper for the publication of legal notices now. Um, typically, that's the Rutland Herald. Mm -hmm. There's still the Rutland Herald. Okay, so that's by consensus? By consensus. We all good with yep. that? Okay. I am. Yep. Yep. Next on it, we have to set the day of the week, time, and place of our regular meetings. Um, is everybody still good with this day and time? Yep. Yes. Okay. okay. And typically every year we adopt the rules of procedure. Everybody's have a chance to read those. Yep. Should that be a motion or can we just do that by consensus? I think we do it by consensus. Okay. Yep. yep. We'll good with that then too. Okay. Do we have any additions for deletion, Sandy? I don't have any. I don't know if you, if you and Mark, Mark doesn't have any. No, Mark, Mark is good. No. Okay. So approval of select board minutes. Let's start with. March 16th, our okay. Longford Select Board Minute. Okay. I make a motion. I'll second it. Um, the one thing I noticed was that the meeting was actually started at 6.15, wasn't it? Not 6.30. Okay. okay. That's true. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Approval of the minutes? Aye. 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 And minutes from the informational meeting. Do we have any corrections or discussion on that? None. All those in favor of approval? Was there a motion and second on that one? Oh, I'll make a motion. Oh, second. All those in favor? For the aye. 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 Pay orders. We currently have a pay order for March 21st for $24,600. Five dollars and forty-two cents. Do we have any additions to that? No, no additions. Okay. Questions or comments? I make a motion. Aye. Those in favor? Aye. 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 
Road Commissioner's report. Well, <laughs> I think I'm going to let Steve start. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to be the mellow one tonight. I don't know what happened. I get a phone call that the gentleman was going to dump snow in the dooryard and yada, yada, yada. So I don't know the whole story. Sandy knows more about it probably than I do. I've been out of town all day. So I don't know what you'd like to do with it, but probably not a wise idea to be doing that. A lot of work. Um, yeah. So. I don't know if there's anything we can do to redirect his attitude, this gentleman's attitude or not. But. Probably we could just ask Sandy to send him a note that there was plowed on a Friday and it was sanded today. no houses on it is not going to be a first priority when, it, when it's a major snowstorm. And it was, yeah, there was more than a lot to this storm when the higher you got snow-wise. So, right. you know, I think they did pretty well considering what we had going on and stuff, but I don't feel that they need to be, I don't want to say a rasp, but take this kind of nonsense from anybody. Mm -hmm. No. So, you know, he should have called me. It's what he should have done. He usually calls me. He didn't call me this time. And he has your number? Oh, yeah. I got okay. it in my phone book. It's on the website, too. Okay. It's also in the monthly newsletter. Okay. So, I just rather than not having static with the road crew. If there's issues, I wish they would take them to me first. And then we can figure out which way to go with them without bothering the crew. Yeah. No I just finished spending 30 hours up there pushing snow banks back. No matter what the situation was, that kind of behavior was is not, it's acceptable. not acceptable. It's not acceptable. So well, that's twice in the same week. We had it with another gentleman. picture blade up. I was following you. I put a wheelbarrow full of snow in here. Yeah, well. <laughs> that. We live in Vermont. Yeah. That's kind of what I thought. Are you still mad? Yeah, he's always mad, I guess. I don't know. Um, other than that, I think we fared pretty well through the storm. I don't think we had any issues with breakdowns. A couple stuck trucks. That's no biggie. Okay. I don't that's think it's better than what a lot of towns like. Yeah, mm -hmm. someone has some real, real bad ones. Yeah. By the way, the deputy who stopped by to talk about this complaint said she was surprised she'd heard from anybody about roads in Wallingford. She said their office gets complaints all the time, ask, and they have to call a lot of towns in our area to come clean up the roads, but she said we never have to call Wallingford. She's the one that called me on Route 7 the other day. She told Jill and I that she never needs to call Wallingford to get the roads cleaned up. They're always cleaned up. Good work, guys. Thanks. And please, everybody. Some days are better than others. <laughs> but other than that, I don't think I have anything else. Nope. I don't think there was anything on the agenda. Well, we have an annual financial plan. What's that? This annual financial plan needs to. State requires the town to file an annual financial plan related to highway expenditure in order to qualify for paving and structure and bridge grants, etc. It would be the pleasure of the board that we sign it. Okay. The board normally does. If so. Okay. It looks like we will all be signing it. Mm -hmm. Yes.
Do we want to reappoint Phil as the road commissioner for another year? <laughs> Phil willing to do it. Not that I need to ask. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Phil willing to do it. Yeah, he is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. You okay, Phil? Phil? Yeah. We should make it a 10 year term. Don't push a lot. We want no motion. We should accept it. We should. Okay. Motion make it a motion. I make a motion. Yeah. Second. Session. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, Phil. <laughs> 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 That's a campaign well run, Bill. Yeah. I work hard. You do work hard on it. Um, in our packet saw, we had a road maintenance agreement with Phil Baker and Sons. Have you had a chance to do that, Phil? Yeah, I did. I I think that's what you wanted right there, Sandy, right? Now okay. we break down. Okay. And I didn't, this says draft, so I didn't sign it. You want one? Yeah, to sign yeah. It? yeah I, no, I, I want. It I just, want to incorporate all of that into. All I did was give you an hourly rate for each piece of equipment, and as we talked about before, it'll be at your select board call or whatever we need to do. Somebody else makes that call. When yep. they need, that's all. Yep. I have no issues with that at all. Okay. So I can just at, before the next meeting, I'll incorporate what he has offered for hourly rates, and you can review it and decide on approve or whatever amend the agreement at the next meeting. So. Okay. Uh, honorable mentions. Uh, we want to thank Milt and Colleen Siever, who donated, donated money to the food shelf in Town French's memory. And we wanted to thank all the town meeting election volunteers who assisted at the polls this last election. And we're on to public comments. Everybody else is here for a specific reason, I take it? We are. Okay. The Conservation Commission. So Carol is seeking permission to use income from the sales of the honey from the stone meadow to purchase some new bees. Oh. Do you want to speak to that, Carol? Or? I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. I'm turning up my hearing aids. I don't want to <laughs> Okay. I guess you're here. You're looking for uh, permission to use the hunt money from the sale of the honey bee to purchase oh, more bees. That first. Yes. I mean, there because you'll get. I think you'll probably get some money back from our actual allotment for the year. But I would prefer to spend that money. Jane and I worked hard on the bees and and putting the honey together, and I'd rather spend that money on what's coming, then not. So, you know, you just, and I can't guarantee you we won't use everything. I mean, something can come up. We're, we're now discussing um, removing the um, invasive species next to the uh, transfer station at Waldo Ling. And, you know, the, the tarps that we would need to put down or whatever we decide to do might be expensive, not hugely expensive, but it might go into our regular town money. And so I can't promise you there'll be anything left. But we have until July, or the July 1st. <coughs> Wait, we also, Debbie Scranton, we also assume that the bees would be like paying for their own keep, so to speak. You know, that that money would, it, instead of just draining the Conservation Commission budget, it's whatever we could get as, as out of them should go toward them. 
And now we have to buy three new colonies because they all died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Jane was going to talk with um, Kevin Mullen, and you haven't had a chance to get in touch. He hasn't wanted to in, and he said he could call me when he's got the moment to come over and take a look at the hive, because I dismantled it, but I haven't cleaned it up. To see if there was a reason why they might have died. I have heard that um, a lot of people have lost bees this winter, so I'm kind of keen to make some advice. Because mm -hmm. they should go through it, you know, they should be able to. Is the board good with it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the other thing, you had a grant application. But you should have copies of it. Yep, they do. You got Dennis and his wife wrote it. Yeah, I can speak to that. Uh, Dennis Duhane, Creek Road. Uh, yeah, it came across the wire that it was an opportunity for a conservation grant uh, to $250 to $600. Right. And I was talking to Ralph, and there's one section on the bog trail that's very steep, and it, right now it's got timber steps but they're rotting, they've been rotting for quite a while. So we have an erosion problem and um, an accessibility problem. So we just thought we'd take it, try to take advantage of this grant money to buy some material to build a new system in there that will both help with accessibility and also it'd be a set of stairs. It won't be on, it wouldn't be on the lay of the land, it would be above, so you didn't have the same erosion problem. So anyway, I think we asked, the grant total came up to like $280 or something like that. $290 with tax, what? but I didn't get Sorry. away without paying the tax. Oh. Anyways, uh, yeah, we'd just like to have the select board's approval to apply for that. We still have to vote on the matter of two, and I know that there are six out of seven that are pro this. So. Yeah, I don't know if there was that. There was one trail that was still going to be accessible to the bikes. That will, in fact, that will still be taken into consideration. It won't affect that at all. There's only, there are two trails that are open to bikes. Mm -hmm. The main trail and then the trail which is okay. to the south. Um, yeah, this this is not a bike. One of the no. bike trails. No. This is this is the Bob Trail, which is into I. We walk I walk them, but I, I don't know any of their names. I, 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 difference to me, which ones, what I've names. I've walked so. it before. I'm good at names and landmarks yeah. and things like that. I so just wanted to make sure that infringement upon any of that to an access. It would doesn't not be touch the outer limits trail at all. I think we're good. Okay. So, so they can apply. It. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that was nice and sweet. Thank you, Bruce. I did notice um, where the boat launch is on the creek, across from Stone Meadow, the beaver have been taking down some trees, and there's a couple trees that are kind of little makers leaning against other mm -hmm. trees. So yeah. I don't know if that's something that you guys have yeah. uh, a way to get down. Or yeah, Ralph Nips and talk to the. Uh, yeah. The tree, tree warden in town, yes. yeah. and he's looked at it, and um, I don't know exactly what he came up with for an idea. <laughs> I, I know one of them by the picnic table is is caught up. Right, that's the one. I, yeah, that's the yeah. one. Oh, right. The other one, that's the biggest one. The other one, the little ones. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, they actually just just north of there about. 30 or 40 feet, they took a pretty good size one down. Oh, did they? Oh, went down in the fall. Yeah. But that other one, we're, we're concerned that if, if they ever do get through it, it's not actually going to come down for them. They would stay hung up. Right. And then at some point, I mean, at that point, it's a danger. Yeah. So you probably, that's, I, was just, I was just curious, just wanted to bring it to your attention. Yeah, 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 no, so the warden's been, he's gone down and saw, he's okay. right. so he, you know, he's aware. I also thought there was some sort of special tape that you put on the tree. I saw it on an expensive, but uh, really fun. 
Yeah. I think they're so far gone that the only way to do is take them down. It didn't look like much holding them up. Yeah, they probably, they're getting you know, right through it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're done. Thank you. 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 Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. so, how's everyone doing? My name is Brian Elliott. I am the cross country and track and field coach over at Miller Reunion. Um, I just started here um, probably August of 2022, and I've been kind of helping with the program over the last year or so. Um, what we're kind of requesting is is to allow Mill River Union High School to have access to Stone Meadow Park um, and the rec center down there once a year for a cross country course. So we can host our SPL League cross country meet once a year. Um, for this next school year, I think our plan date is September 23rd. Let me double check that before we uh, publish it. <laughs> yeah. It's a Saturday. I know it's a Saturday. It's September. I think it's September 23rd. Yes. Yeah. So it's us. Uh, as of right now, it's scheduled for September 23rd over at the park. I think we would probably start the middle school race at 9:30, um, and then do the high school boys, high school girls races, which would probably take about 30 to 45 minutes each. Um, so maybe some two hours prep time before the race starts, maybe an hour or two to clean up after the race is over. Um, and again, I would like to have. Try kind of use this this year as a, a test run, see it as, use it as a trial, and then if it's a success, it wasn't too inconvenient. The course was good; everyone was kind of happy. Uh, getting it approved where Mill River Union High School can use that uh, course at least once a year for their home high school cross, uh, cross country courses. Um, right now, the school, or in the past, I guess I should say, is the school's been doing um, the cross country course at the school, and I've just from listening to the kids again, I have never seen us host me. But I've been on paying attention to what the kids are saying, and what they've told me is they don't enjoy it. It's confusing. Um, it's a lot of laps around the school, and they just kind of feel like they would rather not run home cross country courses, cross country meets, and they'd rather go somewhere else to compete because they just feel like um, it wasn't really a quality experience for them. So I think, in the interest of providing a quality athletic experience to the kids at Miller Reunion, I think this is really important for us to kind of get this approved so that it, way they're able to continue competing at a high level, having their own cross country horse that they can have pride in. Um, just kind of keep building a program. Mm -hmm. um, any questions about any of that? Well, pro probably restrict access to the park for one day and that's be it really probably i mean honestly it'd probably be from like maybe like seven o'clock to one o'clock seven a.m to one p.m realistically okay and realistically at, at, after the races are done we'll just clean it up it's not like it's people can be there at that point <laughs> no. this would be limited to the rim trail is that correct it starts down at the athletic course so i don't know if you've seen the trail map yeah they I gave you the map last Yes, we saw the map last time. Okay, it so it like was basically the rim trail. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. I don't know. Again, I don't know it all. Goes all around, but yeah, it starts down at the sports complexes, uh, and you're there. Do starting like the middle, of, like outfield, um, from the building of the baseball fields. They go out and they run the perimeter of all the athletic complexes twice, and then they go up to the trail, up to the lake, and then back down. Um, and I know there was like some concerns about like some of the parts of the trail, but I kind of. <coughs> set up the course so by the time they get to those like little tighter parts on the cross country course their race would be so spread out that it wouldn't be um like a like a, a traffic jam anymore so that first mile down at the bottom will kind of spread people out like you'll have a 
maybe a two to three minute gap between first to last place at that point, and then it's going to continue to just slowly progress at that point. Is there, how many schools are going to be invited? Will there be like school buses? So um, it depends. So I know the, the way the SVL does it, they kind of just put a calendar out and then schools say, we're going to go to that meet, we're not going to go to that meet. Um, yeah. I know Wallingford Elementary is right there. So realistic, and it's only 400 meters from Wallingford Elementary down to the, where the start line would be. Yeah. So for the most part, school buses can drop kids off and then potentially go up to Wallingford Elementary. So we're kind of yep. resolving that issue. Okay. And then when the meet's over, I think they're cross country. Is it walk back? Yeah, there you go. It's <laughs> a good warm day. They're yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good idea. What about the crossing from the uh, bridge over to Stone Meadow, crossing the road? You'd have to have volunteers out there once the race is starting to just kind of help direct traffic. I know I have a great bunch of parents that would probably be okay with helping navigate traffic out there a little bit. Yeah, there would be traffic there on a Saturday morning. There would be traffic. Because the transfer Saturday. station is Yeah, there. And it's just like that one strip. So like once they get past there, it's good to go until they come back down. So you just have to have a, um, a person out there just kind of helping you navigate traffic. So. Any other questions? And you can put a sign on each end of the road or on the yeah, far end. Yeah. It just yeah. says, you know, potential okay. delay or, and just, you know. And even closure, whatever, temporary. Put a warning like the week before. Exactly. Most people go weekly, so. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sports pleasure. I'm all for it. Fine with it. Good with it. I'm good with it. Okay. I'm good with that, especially because of the. Also, we've been talking about the rec committee and the conservation committee working together, and I like the fact that it's going to do something that's going to be pretty widespread that people see. Mm -hmm. Which is cool. Yeah, and I really like once we have the map, like people might use it locally, mm -hmm. just like to yeah. train for a 5K. Right. Yeah. You know, because he mapped it out, he did all the work, and we can just use it. So That's I think it could be an asset. Yes. Yeah. And I, I love the fact that we can sort of help our local high school exactly. um, participate more fully yeah. within another sport. So I'm. I mean, running around that school cannot be fun. It's, no. And I feel bad. Honestly, like, I feel bad for them at practice already. But um, yeah, they were telling me, like, the, from what they told me, they were like, what would happen is people would miss sections of the um, of the course, and it was wasn't really a great experience. And then, and then the SVL, um, I know at the last coaches meeting, they talked about they don't want courses that are more than four laps of the same thing anymore. So I was just like, all right, this is the perfect time. Let's just mm -hmm. do it now. So let's use this year as a test run and see how it goes. And then after that, because I want it to even be like, if I'm not the cross country course at Mill River anymore, I still want whoever's in charge of that program yeah. to have access and have that map so that they're able to use that course at least once a year for their needs. I've had a child in track and field since the pandemic, before the pandemic, now, and I don't think Mill River has hosted a cross-country event. They did in 2021. They did, that, in they did in 2021? Yeah, it was at the school. Okay. Didn't think they had hosted any, and I, I know they hadn't before that 2021 race. But they had 2019 and 2021. I don't think they had. Hosted. I, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm very new to Vermont, but I know 2021 they had held one. I can't 2020. I, no, probably not. Uh, 2019, <laughs> I have no idea. I didn't attend one. My son was on the cross country team at that time, so oh. wasn't one that year. Any other questions or concerns that you guys may have? I just want to say thank you for helping build the program and supporting the students. Yeah, they're sure. doing really well. Yeah, we're really excited for this new outdoor track season, so. Yes. All right. so wonderful. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, Brian. Okay. Yep. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. I guess it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking for permission to purchase a magnetic board. Yeah, I have a printout of it if you guys want to look at what I was proposing. Um, this was to facilitate like some group sports down at the start at one end. And it's the same one that I have. Yeah, the I gave them that. They oh, got it in their packet. Oh, okay. But that might have a little bit clearer picture, but they have the whole oh, description. Just, what I liked about this one is um, it's about middle of the road as far as price. It's 100 and there's a $10 off today, so it's $154.99. 
Um, you know, they're anywhere from $50 to $400, but this one got good reviews. It's weather resistant, so it has like a rubber, um, you know, barrier between the inside and the outside to prevent rain from getting in. It locks, it has tamper resistant plexiglass. Um, the screws go on the inside, you wouldn't believe a lot of them have the screws on the outside. Oh. So you would just, like the thing locks, but then the screws are on the outside, so you could just like take it off. And, like, that's logical. So this one, the screws are inside the lock. So the idea is that we would be able to have um, some community sports that we would reserve the tennis courts or um, the fields or the basketball court to have group sports. And we have, um, I haven't been able to add in the seven written copies that we got to the questionnaire survey, whatever you want to call it, but a lot of people did offer to organize events mm -hmm. for free, which was great. So we have like women's basketball, pick up soccer on Saturday mornings, pickleball. Everyone wants pickleball, by the way. I don't know. Where did yeah. that come from all of a sudden? All the rage. Yeah. Pickleball and swimming lessons. Yes. Everybody wants pickleball and swimming lessons. Um, yeah, other things, you know, like painting, you know, there's, people had like lots of great things that they were willing to facilitate for free, so, yeah. I think this board will get some use. And I can see the kids wanting to, like, you know, if they're practicing as teams. I think it's great to foster communication. And, yeah. And to have the fields more used. To yeah. have that area used as much as possible is great. Right. So, yeah, so this is 100 in... Um, Fifty-four ninety-nine. I think there's eighty dollars left from last year that needs to be spent, Julie, really right mm -hmm. before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking we could use the other eighty-five, or I guess it's seventy-five with the discount out of the um, printed out the budget. I was thinking uh, just the recreation programs. There's five hundred dollars in there, so it would facilitate some recreation programs having that. So I thought we could take the other seventy-five out of that. I don't think we've touched that five hundred dollars yet. Mm -mm. I think the consensus of the board is yes. Do it. Okay. So can the town order that, or you want me to order it and get reimbursed? How does that work? We'll order it. Okay. Because we won't have to pay tax. Great. Perfect. Nice. Uh, what else am I here for? Oh yeah, rec options. I wasn't sure. I wanted to talk to you before we start, like planning. Rec programs, how you wanted to work that. If you want us to get like approval for each rec program, but like all these people that volunteer for things, and uh, Morgan Over is working on um, becoming trained in meditation, and she offered to do like a learn to meditate class, so like a suggested donation. Um, you know, there's all kinds of people who want to do things, and I'm happy to do the legwork to try to organize and facilitate. And other people like. Um, Brian Cornwell is really into soccer, so he was thinking about organizing the soccer. So, you know, we'll probably each pick a event and try to organize it ourselves, something that we're interested in doing and can help. I really want to do pickleball because everybody wants pickleball. So I've been asking around to try to find an instructor that would come like maybe one night a week for like a month or something. And everybody who wants to learn to play pickleball can like come and mm -hmm. learn. Um, so I was going to use the rest of that $500 for hopefully before the end of June, you know, we would probably try to do everything for like a suggested donation. Not everything would be like free, but like if somebody's willing to like do a painting class and it's not going to cost us anything, you know, I don't know that we would charge people for that. I mean, I don't know. Do you want us to get approval for every little thing or do you want us to just stay within that budget and just use it up and use it up and get as many rec programs going as we can. I just need feedback on how you want to, because I'm ready to start. I don't think we want to micromanage you. I mean, yeah, I think I would say do what you can within the budget. Okay, good. All right. Sounds good. Um, Keisha, the, boy, the girls varsity soccer coaches also do drop-in soccer, so Dave, just to let you know. Is that Saturday mornings? It ha was this year. Okay. Just, I'll let David know. Yeah. So he would, he would know. He would know. Yeah, I think he went to that too. What do you think? 
Uh, well, there was a group from like keep... Wallingford and Timoth that uh, uh, a few years ago that were using the um, tennis court for pickleball. Like I think like every Thursday or something. So mm -hmm. there was like a little group that was already going on it. So yeah. it's kind of nice. Yeah, I'm glad they painted the line. They more pickleball. Yeah. All the yeah. There's all sorts of videos on YouTube for that, learning it too. Oh yeah. If anybody's interested. They even have it in gym now. The you could be the instructor. Yes. I don't know how to play that myself. But. And Ben has taken pickleball. He's played oh, pickleball. Like teach yes. Oh. At the rec That's center, right. I'm surprised the number of people I see coming in asking the hours for the rec for the pickleball court at the rec center in Rutland. Oh really? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Just the video thing. Hi. So for the ball field concession, somebody um, inquired about whether it could be open. So I had asked Sandy and Julie like how that was done in the past, and they both said that it was basically like volunteers, just okay. the yep. parents of the baseball players or softball players. Um, so I was wondering if we could put it out to the community, somebody to run it. Or if we could open it up to like community groups to do as like a little fundraiser, like Sandy does for the music nights for the food, and I don't know. I I was just brainstorming ideas mm -hmm. to get it open because it's just there and it's not being used, and I you know there's probably yeah. some, some money to be made. And it is mm -hmm. nice. Like I remember when my kids were down there, it's nice to have some food available when mm -hmm. we're spending a lot of time down there. I don't think there's any available running water down there, so anything for food would have to not have to worry about that. Right. Yeah, I guess it would just have to be like snacks. And snacks. Sodas. There's a fridge in there, I think. I don't know if it yes. still works. But... Not sure. Okay. We got it after Irene, so. I guess you can check it out and see if it's still. Check it out. I mean, I don't think yeah. if somebody was willing to do it. Okay. Um, I don't know, I just thought if we could put it out to the community to see if people could put together proposals. Okay. Somebody's willing, are you willing to right. consider having somebody run the snack shirt for baseball season? Yeah, okay. Would it be worth it to try to reach out to some like food trucks or some of the eat more evening? Like recommending, like just to have like if you have a food truck come, they would of course take all the revenue from Right. Well, like selling food, but they would still be there for when people were at pickleball or at some, another uh, event. It might be a fun way to, even especially the ones that are going to be coming to Wallingford Day. Maybe we could ask them. I don't know. I wonder if there would be enough business for that. You know. I mean, if you had volunteers who were there with snacks, you would know that you would get customers and that they would be able to get a little money raised for yeah. future rec things. Yeah, I wasn't thinking for us to make no. money. I was just thinking as like a community service, yeah. like somebody would just have snacks, yeah. you know, so that like there's food down there for It is nice to kids. have snacks down there when you're down there for hours. It is nice. Watching yeah. sports and everything. Yeah. And I guess people could always like break in water if you just wanted to like That's steam true. hot dogs or something, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's probably a way to... We don't have um, water in the booster shack either at Mill River. Oh, okay. So yeah, kind of. It's kind of like camping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All your water in. There you go. <coughs> so you could do a similar. You could do a similar you thing. You could do something. You could. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what would be good would be the classes, the advisors like, for tenth grade, eleventh grade might be good ones. Oh, Volunteers. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. For their final, for their senior trips. I know they need, we're behind. We, we have nothing. We, I didn't even know we had to do it until like last week. Yeah. You're kidding. So I think Megan's our advisor. Yeah, we were supposed to be raising for senior year. I yes. have no idea. Nobody told me. <laughs> oh, we really haven't had school until get the memo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, just think of the different Good classes. Point. We should stick our kids in the snack shack. And exactly. Well, <laughs> Good point. But, but no, just for all the classes, it would be a yeah. good, it might be a good thing because they're teenagers, so they can. Yeah, they can make popcorn and. Yeah, sell candy. That's right. Soda. Just a thought. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's a great idea. I'm sure there's tons of groups out there that would do it if we yeah, right. opened it up to them. Oh, definitely. Like, but you haven't had trouble, have you? Not at all. Yeah. We raised $150 the other night for uh, Chris Hines' bike race, bike trip awesome. for uh, cancer. Yeah, just from the bank sale. Nice. 
So how do you find people? Do you just email people directly? Well, it, the, it was the Mill River. The yes. Mill River. Uh, yeah. yeah, and sometimes oh. it is. It's been the elementary school. It's been the historical society. Yeah. It's just different groups, but... It would be the same kind of thing. You just bring whatever you want to sell mm -hmm. and just sell. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's just like having a massive ba there. bake sale. I mean, you could do like the bags of like different chips and stuff like no. that. I mean, you just go to, do a easy. BJ's run and or Costco run and buy bulk yeah. and right, right. Exactly. And if yeah. you know when the little league is going, if once the schedules get out with little league and those, that when you know there's going to be a lot of people down there, that would be good. And if you so got into I, like, uh, if you got into like a pickleball or a basketball league or whatever, I mean, when when your bulletin board gets kicking off and you know what groups are going to be down there, that'll be a great time to have it open and selling it too. Yeah. During basketball season, those bats of popcorn in Mill River, those were a dinner. Oh, I know. Yeah. So it would be popular. Yeah. Okay. Especially baseball when you got the three fields going. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah there's so many people that have exactly. And little siblings that need entertainment. Yeah. Yep. I, mean, okay. I think it's great. All right, good. So we'll, maybe I'll put something together. Do you mind putting it out to the community if I write Definitely. Yeah, together? sure. Yep. Just, I don't mind doing the scheduling or whatever, you know, and helping clean it. Mm -hmm. Just figure it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the last thing was the lifeguard flyer. Um, we were talking about this at the last rec meeting that. We were thinking we might need to make it more enticing to get people to apply for the lifeguard position. So we were just brainstorming like ideas, and one idea was to put together like a flyer saying like competitive wages, you know, potential reimbursement for certification. Um, and one thing that came up a number of times on the surveys is that people want swimming lessons. It was like one of the number one things. And I know a number of parents weighed in who had like older kids that kids used to be lifeguards down there that said their kids used to teach swimming lessons to make extra money. Yes. So like on top of their salary, during the off hours, they would teach swimming lessons. <coughs> um, and I remember that doing that when my kids were little too, like paying 10 bucks and then spend some time with your kid and try to teach them to swim, or it could be something more organized. And if you had more organized <coughs> lessons, because there used to be, before that, there were more organized lessons, mm -hmm. and you could get an hourly rate kind of thing going. Yeah. yeah. So there's potential for somebody to make some extra income on that and make it a little bit more of an enticing position. So one thing we're thinking is like making like a colorful poster and putting it like contacting like the Rutland um, High School um, guidance office and seeing if they could put it around the school and try to drum up some distance because I know we've had a hard time finding people. And also would you put it up like around Mill River? Because yeah. I think if it's posted there, it's going to be more in their face and... When they see it a potential summer. Put it at MSJ, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The rec center just this week posted their um, lifeguard classes. Oh, they did? Yes. So we could put that on there, like dates. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, and even and if you can take silver platter, like, Melissa you Peterson, Peterson, she may be able, the ones that help organize that class may be able to also help yeah. too. Who is? Oh my gosh. Is it Melissa Peterson now? Kim Peterson. Kim Peterson. Kim Peterson. Oh, Kim Peterson. Yeah, Melissa, somebody's the swim coach. Yeah. She's yeah. the swim team coach, right? Kim She's the director, but she also helps with the... Peters. Peters. Yeah, Kim Peters. Yep, I contact her. I've con already contacted her this year about that we need lifeguards. I contact her every year. I know, I feel like Rutland gets most of the lifeguards, so like if we want to like draw people from that pool, we need to make it more enticing. And so I think, right. you know, putting the hourly rate on there, which um, when we talked to Sandy about this, she said it, you guys need to set the hourly rate. Yeah. So we put a number in the budget, but the actual hourly, we can't put an hourly rate on the brochure until it's set. Right. Um, and then as far as reimbursing for the certification, like I think in the past, sometimes that's been done. Yeah. And that might be enticing to people. Yeah. Because yeah. the other issue is it's a very short season, so it's a big investment for somebody to make yeah. for short season. <coughs> So that's just what we're offering to do if you guys are up for it, to try to help find people. What do we want to talk about setting that rate? What? When do we want to talk about setting the pay for the lifeguards? Well, I mean, if I think you, if you want to do it tonight, you could, because okay. it's, I mean. Yeah, we're coming up on it. It might be a good idea to do it tonight if, uh, then get the, on the poster if that's what you want. We paid, it was 12.75 last year. Yes. I did contact pit, I, I contacted all the areas that had pools or swim lakes or whatever, and uh, 
Pittsford and Killington were the only two that responded. Pittsford pays 15 an hour, okay. and Killington pays 13.50 for lifeguards. 15 for their supervisor, but 13.50 for a starting lifeguard. Brian had contacted somebody, I think, in Rutland Brick and got the rates for them too, and I think it was like 14.50. Yes. Yeah, so it was like significantly more than we were paying, but not quite 15. Right. Okay. And they and both Killington and Pittsford had them do other things too. Um, they had to clean bathrooms. They had to clean the beaches. They had to pick up the garbage at the beginning and end of day. Did they get extra money if they did? Well, that was just part that of was for their lifeguard rate. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. Well, I wonder if we're going to have to consider something like that too, like a combined position at some point. Like I don't know how to do that safely, but yeah, I don't know. It would depend on how many lifeguards we actually manage to hire. No, but I mean, like, because we're paying somebody to sit at the desk and then, you know, check people in, and we're paying a lifeguard. Like, if we can only find one person, like, how do, you know, is there some way to make that one position? But, you know, you can't take money and watch kids in the right. water, too. So it, it's probably not really realistic, but I don't know, just thinking out loud. Well, you might be able to put within the lifeguard job that if they're lifeguarding, they do the opening at the beginning, if they're in that first shift, in the second shift, if they kind of help supervise a closing, that wouldn't interfere with them watching kids in the water. That's true, yeah. Where well, you did sort of like that opening as you come in and they get set, they just do a few opening things. If they're closing it down at the end, they make sure everything's locked, they get all that. Maybe they drop off something where it needs to be dropped off. Mm -hmm. That could maybe be part of their position. Mm -hmm. And then we were also Just trying to get, I think there was a, one of the um, counselors too that was gonna try to get like lifeguards. Yes. So if there's yeah. no way to like use that position in the mix. Virginia, too. yes. She's very interested in getting her lifeguard position. Yeah. But she That's won't know until a while. <clears throat> Well, I've talked to Lori and uh, Lisa last week, and they apparently had been in conversations with her again that she's very interested. So I sent her the uh, the dates of um, the Bennington one. We've had good luck with getting our um, certifications down there. It's just like a one or two day co course, so oh, okay. it's been very convenient. What did we set? What, what is what, the- I was just about to ask, what did we set for a rate? What did, in the budget. Yeah, in the, in what the, did REC ask for in the budget? In the budget, we ended up we with allowing? a 5% increase, wasn't it? No, we put in a pretty significant increase. It was, yeah, yeah, well, that's not yeah. what passed in the budget. Yeah, I wonder what passed in the budget. Lake salaries is 10,400. 10, so that was up from 9,500 last year. That's up from 95. So that would be concessions and the lifeguard. Okay. And the rate for concession is? It's just minimum wage, 13, 18. So minimum so wage is higher than what we paid lifeguards last year. What was that? What we had proposed in our budget, I believe, was eleven thousand two hundred eighty-one. So about two hundred dollars more than. That's about a thousand dollars less. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, ten four to eleven two eighty-one. But this is just the one I printed off my computer. Okay. And that was at. Fifteen and a half? I think it was fifteen, yeah. Okay. So we have about a thousand left, so that would be But let's figure out the hour we can probably figure this out right there. Okay. What the hours are. So how many weeks is it? Is it eight weeks? It's about eight weeks, yeah. So it's <clears throat> say June seventeenth. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So eight, when maybe in August? nine weeks. Uh, <coughs> when in August does it close? Two, 
Let me just count this. Before school starts? Two, three, four, five. Yeah, it closes before seven, school starts. Eight. Like when Possibly nine. Through. If we go through the 19th, this 19th, it would be nine weeks. So it is six hours a day, seven days a week. Oh, um, lifeguards? Yeah. They do five, noon yeah. to five. Yeah. So five hours a day. So and if, if we do seven days a week, if we, you know, in the past couple of years, we've just done Monday through Friday because we only had one person. Right. So it'll just depend on how many people we can hire. Julie, didn't we figure out an hourly rate for that? 10,000? And then for the front desk, it's. Didn't so it's an that, that's 11 that? to 7, so it's 8 hours a day, budgeting. 7 days a week. So that's 56. 56 times, what was it, 13, 18? Equals times 9. So it's 66.50 for concessions. If, you know, but it's going to be closed sometimes, you know, with rain outs and stuff, they'll close. So it won't, it won't go eight hours a day, seven days a week all summer. So, but that would, it would be 66.50 if that's what we did. Yeah, so that all adds up to almost exactly what we proposed, but that got cut. So, okay. So then 15 won't work, right? We need to do less. Right. I'll be thinking, well, what about, what are we thinking, everybody? 37.50 divided by. Did you do five days a week or seven? Seven. Okay. What about 14? You said seven days for the lifeguard, Jenna. Yeah. So we but we've been only doing it for five. Dollars left for lifeguard oh, right. So we end up if we, the lifeguard on um, we 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 budgeted months. ten four and the concessions would be sixty six fifty if it ran right. full so, time without any so time off. So that would be thirty seven fifty left for the lifeguard. I think. How many hours would that be? Well, they do, if we, time? they do five hours a day. If we do Monday through Friday, it's 25. If we do Monday through Sunday, it'll be 35. It depends on what. If you want to ha have a lifeguard weekdays and weekends, how many, if just one person applies, we're only going to be able to do weekdays. I mean, there's one thing. If the counselor gets her lifeguard, then the camp would not need to have an additional lifeguard on, would they? Because right now we do Monday through Friday. That's mainly because that's when the camp's there. But if one of their people has their lifeguard, mm -hmm. then could we then adjust at least the... Cause the and then it, another person would get hired individually as a lifeguard. That would be potentially two lifeguards that would be used. So at least that could at least, if that does happen, we would be able to have lifeguards seven days a week. That doesn't even come out to minimum wage. That, I mean, yeah. she would only be covering... The camp, but I think if she gets her lifeguard certification, she would just be like right. But I'm saying we don't need to. Per the lake would not necessarily need to have a lifeguard Mondays. Oh. Then we could push it out so it's weekend so coverage. So would even be so with the money that we have. At remaining. least to think if we can only hire one, and then she gets hers. But yeah, if, she, I mean, if she's willing to do that. Right. I mean, if she's willing to right. be a lifeguard. Otherwise, the what's the point of her getting her lifeguard if we're also providing a lifeguard? What's that? What is, if she is going to get her lifeguard and only be a counselor, and then we have, and we're providing a lifeguard at that same time. I think, I think last year they were concerned that there wasn't consistent lifeguard. And so I think I, that she wants that. And then they, they go elsewhere. Um, let's. They've done field trips elsewhere for swimming, so I think she wanted, I think they just wanted if the you extra didn't. person with lifeguard training. 
If you did I it five days a week, you could pay. How much? If I did that right, you could pay sixteen dollars an hour. Let me yeah. try. Let me try that again. Yeah, sixteen sixty something. Yeah, sixteen sixty six or something like For that. Five. If you did five days a week, so. You might you, have to go with that. You could pay the fifteen dollars. Yeah, I mean, if there's a lifeguard on staff, I personally would prefer to have the beach lifeguard have a weekday off because, yeah, if there's already a lifeguard with the camp, there's not that many people there during the week as opposed to like the weekends. I would mm -hmm. say we, you know, if we had to prioritize, then there's a lifeguard there at all times. Only the lifeguard would probably just be working with the camp realistically. Right. But there's not that many other. I mean, there is other people there, but mm -hmm. we would just have to post like a lifeguard on duty, even though right because there's a lifeguard there, but they wouldn't be working at the beach. Right. And if it was if there was an issue of inconsistency already, I mean that was for the town too. So right, if she's covering and doing it to be coverage for the camp, and that's sixteen weeks. Was that for one? That would be her own additional. She, they do this meet do. four weeks though, so the camp this yeah. lake is open eight or nine. So she and they only meet four weeks, so it'd only be it'd be four weeks. But still, then your four lifeguard Mondays. would be Wednesday to whatever, you know, or right, like Wednesday through Sunday or something. So that way, the town would always know there's no lifeguard Monday, Tuesday. No Monday, Tuesday or something. Yeah. Instead of Saturday, Sunday, just because there's more people down there on the weekends usually. Mm -hmm. oh. Otherwise, there would be no oh, point so for us to pay for her to get a lifeguard okay. certification. In other words, gotcha. it'd be 225 hours of lifeguard for the summer. For the summer, and you divide that into 37.50, and, and it comes out be, 16. 60. Would that be for 25 hours a week? 25 hours a week. And yes. they could split it between the two lifeguards. So you would prefer like a Wednesday through Sunday or something like that, yeah. or yes. anybody in general? Yes, because th that's when you have more families going down and it's more populated. When you would have more issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could look at the numbers too from last year and the year before to see, like, to confirm that there's more people on the. And weekend. that would be that would be That's five hours. That would be five hours a day, right? Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Like a twelve to five kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's what we usually do, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, if that's what we got, that's what we have to work with. It's better than nothing. I mean, anytime yeah. the lifeguard is there, it's better than. Not having a lifeguard there. And if we have pressure. it during the busiest times, it's better than not having something there at those but times. This, and this is where we have a problem because of the job description. We're making an assumption this person that's, that is not part of her job description is said she'll get a lifeguard. That will be because they have a camp without, they cannot be swimming without a lifeguard, right? Right. So there was the issue last year. It was like sometimes the lifeguard wasn't there, they were sick or whatever, right. couldn't work that day. And then like, it would be like 90 degrees out and the kids couldn't go in the water. And I think it's under, you know, that's why they wanted to have a lifeguard. Which is why originally it used to be one of the directors was requ was supposed to get their lifeguard certification. So when the camp is there, there is one. Right. And none of those job descriptions now have that. Mm -hmm. It's just going on good faith. This one person wants to get it as a subsequent to what her job is. Right. And it's getting where, where it's kind of an issue. It's either that should be written into that job description almost, if that's going to be part of their duties. If she is going to utilize her lifeguard training as part of her job. Right. I mean, could we do six days at $15 an hour? So it's 4.16 is what it comes out to. What's left? Thirty-seven fifty. So that comes out to thirteen eighty-seven an hour to do six days a week. I just don't. I just yeah. don't know that we're going to drop people for six for thirteen something. That's barely above minimum wage. Yeah, and maybe I mean maybe if you go fourteen, even though it might push the budget line a little bit. I mean, there's going to be days where it's going to be rain out where. We're not going to need a lifeguard. Or there, we just so. agree that we're just going to pay somebody more so that we can get a lifeguard and only have it five days a week. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a perfect solution here, but you know, I'm just thinking the more we pay closer to like what they're making elsewhere, and the more if we say like potential for additional income through swimming lessons, if you guys are willing to support that, mm -hmm. if the right person comes along and says, like, yeah, I'm interested, we can. Say, okay, Saturday mornings, you know, we're going to have like three different groups and 
first come, first serve, you know, whatever number of kids per group. If we can figure out how to facilitate that, I think it's not only what the community wants, but it could also entice the lifeguard to want the job. That's what Whites does too. Yeah. It's their lifeguards that teach their lessons. Right. Rutland Town in Pittsburgh. What do we want to do? So is that what we want to do? Do we want to go with the hourly? Twenty five hours at twenty five hours at the sixteen. At sixteen or what do we think? It sounds good to me. I think that's pretty pretty good myself. I mean Pittsburgh's saying they pay fifteen. You talk to Killington and they're only paying thirteen. And while the hours are limited with that rate of pay, you make close to four grand in the summer. Mm hmm I, I don't think that's anything to sniff at for a kid. No, for, not at all. For summer income, plus there's the opportunity that if they did lessons as well on their free time, mm -hmm. they could make a little bit more money. Yeah, we just need to. Okay, well, let's, <coughs> let's move on here. Okay. Make a decision and move on. Okay. Do we need to make a motion? Yeah. So 16 an hour. Can we do it by consensus or do you need a motion? You can do it by consensus. Okay. Hi. You good with that, Justin? And we can always word it as like okay. up to $16 an hour so that, okay. you know, depending on who we get. Oh, that's a good idea. You know, mm -hmm. depending on experience. Like if we can pull like an experienced, amazing person with great references from Rutland that we're not even going to have to like supervise and worry about, yeah. I'm just going to show up and do an amazing job, it might be worth paying $16 yeah. an hour. And to be able to put that down to say up to $16 an hour, and that's above where anyone else is paying. Julie, what, where does the certification reimbursement, what line does that come out of? Oh, whatever's got money left over. <laughs> oh, okay. So does it, does it come out of the salaries? <coughs> <laughs> Summer recreation program weekly rates. So I know we talked about raising these rates. Yeah. What do we think? Does this look reasonable to us? Talked about making uh, non residents more like 80, 85. I thought we had talked about 80 and 85 for everybody. Yeah, a resident at 80 and a non resident at 85. What do we think? That's, that's what we had talked what about, do you think? I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, because it was to help offset some of the Help offset some of the costs. Are we good with that? With asking for eighty for, and then what? What would we do for like two or three children? Just as a point of interest, Proctor is starting a summer recreation yeah. program this yes. year. How much are they charging? They're charging a hundred dollars per child. Mm -hmm. Oh. And, uh, and the hours are a lot less. Sure. It's three, 3 in the afternoon, 3 or 3.30, so ours goes to like 5 or so. Yeah, okay. yeah. We, so the school, I was just going to say it, but... Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I'm thinking then, <laughs> with, with that in mind, what if we did do the 80 and the 85 for one? 150, 170 for your two? Does that sound reasonable? And then for three, um, what are we thinking? That's so we have fifty five dollar difference before. Yeah, you, know, you do um, for two. Want to do one fifty and one sixty because yes. one seventy doesn't give them a break on two for out of state. Right. So one fifty and one sixty for two. What about for three? So you t uh, we were taking 15 off before, so if we took 15 off, 80 times 240. That'd be 225? Yes. 
And then would that be 240 or 235 for non-resident? Yeah. Do we get a lot of non-residents? Yeah, we actually we get do. some. We do. Yeah, we get a fair number. Yeah. And I know there's quite a few that so, come up from Danby oh. and Roland. Yes. Yes, there have been quite a few from Danby. So what do we think for non-resident for three? Are we thinking 240? 240. What do you think? That's good to me. Okay. Then I wrote down for one child, 80 and 85, for two, 150 and 160, for three, 225, 240. You good? Everybody good? Good. Okay. Okie doke. No Elfin Lake admission. Comments about on the on the survey about admissions at Elfin Lake. There was one that I thought I never thought of before, but like um, offering a discount for low income people. That was one that I saw, oh. which I never thought of. But you know, there are probably people that can't afford to go to the beach, which is mm -hmm. sad to think that people who live here and can't go to the beach. Right. It's it's a short season, and the um, the sixty five. It, it's for it's for a very short amount of time. I mean, what's well, eight weeks? So, and we give them a discount if they get their passes before, right? In May, oh. so it's even less. It's like ten dollars less or something. It's like so. fifty five. Yeah, yeah. We always go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so what do we uh, think? So the season pass. That's for the are. family. So leave them where they are. I'm what comfortable with leaving them where they are, but it's I, still very cheap. Yeah, it's extremely cheap. Right. Yeah, I, I think leaving them where they are and then also but really push for the idea of let's get some data on how many people are actually coming in each day. That's a good each idea. Because they weren't recording that. As, even if it's for people that are getting the passes. And the concession workers can probably record who's coming in. Yeah, they already do. Yeah, they, they record on a daily. On a, okay. But um, they, don't, they, they were not recording... Season pass uses, so they'll still they used to have them record that. Right. This past year, they yeah. yeah, they used to record it. Yeah, they used to. They, they used to check. They probably should. Yes. Yeah. If we're gonna do, I think this put, put together a form already to Excellent. record it with. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, we'd want that data. So what about the daily visits? Are you considering raising those as well? What are we thinking yeah. for the daily? Do we want to raise the daily or just keep them where they are? It's so three for adults and a dollar fifty for two to seventeen year olds. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, that's what I meant when I said I was comfortable leaving them where they were. Yeah, it's, it's a good price. It is. <laughs> we're all good. We're good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. So we need to get a zoning permit for the Maple Street retaining wall. We have to give ourselves a permit. We've got to give ourselves a permit. <laughs> Do we approve applying for it? I don't know. I, I don't think we should waive it for us. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there should be any... any uh, favoritism anywhere. <coughs> so we approve of right. getting a permit. Yep. Yeah. Permit for safety. Okay. It's not the permit it's for taxable stuff. Annual appointments and reappointments. I, I have a question for you though. But so, this is not for the select board to approve. This goes to is that Zoning administrator, Zoning. Right? Yeah, but okay. but as a select board, as is the owner would still have to sign that permit. Okay, all right. They did the same thing for the state board. It's it's for the flood because it's right. a flood zone. Okay, I just thought somebody had said we were, that it was a permit for us that we could sign the permit, but 
Bruce will have to sign on the owner's line. Yeah, okay. Um, and it sh and I, I talked to Charlie about this, and I just want to make sure um, there's no state permits required or Army Corps, but Josh Caraval stressed that measures need to be taken to make sure no concrete ends up in the water. Mm -hmm. And I talked to Charlie again about that today, but... Yeah, he said no fish food. Nothing in the water, no concrete in the water, as long as we get... Take measures, no concrete in the Iron's water. Quicker. Um, so reappointments. Um, so Sandy contacted everyone. William Weiss does not want to serve as a rep to the Rutland County Safe okay. Waste District. Ken Fournette does not want to be the alternate for the RFPC and TAC. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we don't know if that's the case. Yeah, she never answered, so I think we just, we'll just need to put it out there. Okay. Unless somebody on the select board wants to be the Rutland County Solid Waste rep. Thank you, thank you. Carolyn? <laughs> you like that. Justin? <laughs> um, do we want to do this in mass or go through each one? and? usually do it on mass. Yes. So maybe we entertain a motion that to reappoint those reappoint. as listed or whatever. Yeah. So I make a motion to reappoint um, the names as listed <coughs> um, for all those up for reappointment. Who wish to be reappointed? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We do need to get a um, scholarship. Did you want to be on the scholarship yes. committee again? Yes, okay. I'll be scholarship again. Let's see. We're up to boy with the boot garden requests from me and Ewan. feel but I wasn't comfortable with, with this oh. first of all the town actually doesn't own the, the property the garden is on this is Anne. oh hi hi I'm here to speak to that okay very briefly um, I came before the board last year because UVM had approved a special garden project at Boy with the Boot. And I assumed, wrongly, that that meant that we were covered under their initiative of a garden in every town. So UVM has just notified me that we were approved as a standalone project, an educational um, effort. Um, so I would like to have the Boy with the Boot Garden designated as our garden so that it's, when they list all the towns in the state, Boy with the Boot is the garden in Wallingford. So it's that simple. And we need approval of the town because we're on, part of it is on public property, I believe, from the center line into where the garden bricks are. So I'm wondering what are the what are the pros and what are the cons? The pros are that they'll give us money for gardening supplies, not huge, but maybe 250 a year. Um, I don't want to be smug without any solicitation. Uh, Julia's had a jar on her uh, 
table uh, in the clerk's office, and we've raised $180, so just comes in. It will be very helpful, because this year we're investing in some shrubs that are native shrubs. They'll run about $50 each. So I don't think that we will actually need the UVM money, but it could be useful in the future. And this would be a yearly, a yearly amount that could be accessed? Yes, we could apply for each year. Um, the other thing is, we've been one of the first 10 towns to have a designated garden. So uh, that's sort of tempting in my competitive <laughs> spirit. <laughs> Pulteney uh, has one. Uh, I mean, they're scattered around the state, but gradually, with the outreach from UVM, the towns are getting going. So now the question is, what are the cons? There's no cost. There will be oh, no I mean cost. negatives. So we, we see what's positive about doing this. What are the possible pitfalls? My concern was, as I said, the, the organization should publicly acknowledge volunteer support from UVM, so they're going to want us to publicize it for them. I think just acknowledging the UVM Extension Master Gardener Program, right? Just getting like credit to the UVM gardeners for maintaining the garden, that's what's being asked here? Um, sounds like they want to use it as an educational tool. Yeah, be, they really don't want us to be just doing weeding and maintaining. We are supposed to have an educational component. Okay. And that will begin to kick in. You'll see Front Porch Forum announcing something at the library around pollinator plantings. So these would be like extra programs that would happen? Yes. And is there a cost associated to the town no. of those programs? No, none. We would use the library community room and make a donation, oh. but that would come from the volunteers, the team that does the gardening. Okay. But and this, this would be public education programs that anyone in town could come and attend and, yes. and learn from? Yes. And also more passive, we will have poster boards at the library right. that will talk about the benefits of natives. Uh, when you plant natives, right. they do better, right. basically. Yeah. If, are you planning on extending that garden? Uh, no. Um, some of the volunteers have snuck up the street and they're now weeding the, uh, the strips that lead into the uh, Wallingford house. Right. Okay. Well, then that's what I, my, where I was going with it is if we're going to expand that or go outside the town. We're not going outside. The town. You know, if By you the way. noticed on the, as you're waiting at the lights or something, mm -hmm. Uh, we've pulled the evergreens out, which okay. has essentially expanded the garden, yeah. but we're still in the same footprint. Okay, oh. all right. Okay. Does, will UVM require any signage or plaques That's in their answer. garden? Because I've seen that in other town gardens. That was one of the things that I thought I read and uh, was objected to. Well, okay. I know. Is there going to, does UVM require any signage or plaques within yes. the garden that'll take up? the sign. Uh, was not up last year. It's about this big. It will just stick in the dirt in between some plants. It will not be on the fountain okay. or okay. the walkway. So what do we think? I'm okay with it. I'm fine with it. Bruce, you had hesitations. Yes. Do you still have them? Yes. Okay. Justin, what do you think? I think it sounds, sounds good to go with what you guys are saying. Okay. What are you concerned, Bruce, other than the property? Yeah. Well, we don't own it. I don't like the idea of them saying that we have to provide education. I don't like the idea of the sign. Um, if we don't provide any of Frankly, I don't want to sign a document that says, I will do this, I will do that. Because I will not be the person doing it. 
Is there consequences if they find that if for some reason something can't be done? Uh, they might, I can't imagine this happening. They might drop us from the list of garden and other town. But that, that would be the consequence. It's not no legal. I was thinking financial. No. Like if they give us money wanting it back. No. No, that would be a year by year thing. And once we do this, is this, does it have to be done every year? No, hopefully not. I could have done it together if I understood that you use the same application, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. you have to submit two. Make a motion if you want, no? Just vote well, against it. <laughs> I could, I could, I just... I'm reading through it. It does say, you know, my organization shall publicly acknowledge volunteer support, which is fine. Um, but they're asking for, upon request, I will provide the state office with information about the project's impact on our, our organization and community. Um, how much is, this, is the select board of the town going to get? I can't imagine that it would ever come directly. They might, I'm the point person that UVM communicates with. I think they would let me know that they want more information. And we could generate it. It's nothing that the select board or okay. them would have to do. So on, on the agreement, it says, uh, Right above Town of Wallingford, it says, for this project, I affirm that I am an employer or authorized representative of. Can Would it be okay if you made Anne the authorized we'll representative? We'll do a motion and we make her the option. And then she could sign it. Can, can we do that? Sure. Can we make you the authorized signer? I'm okay with that. That's okay? Okay. I think, yes, if they come back and fuss about it. Wait. It's your prerogative. Wait, I make a motion that we make Anne Awad the um, the authorized representative of the um, partner commitment form for the garden in every town boy with a boot garden. Second. I'll second that. Great. All those in favor? Aye. Those. Okay. Good solution. Great. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. We've been having fun. Thank you. So, if Anne, if you want to sign this, I can uh, scan it for you tomorrow and then okay. email it to you so that you can submit it. I'll fill out the rest if you just want to do the signature. Just row 2033. I hope that's not profound. <laughs> that's okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Social media policy. Um, okay. This was triggered by uh, this weekend when Julie had posted about the rabies. Clinic at the town hall and comments that were being made on Facebook that got rather nasty. Um, so I guess Julie is asking us do we want to continue the Facebook account as it is? Do we want to adopt the social media policy. Who who are the admins on the account currently? Is it just Julie? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, because there's the yeah. options of having other admins if possible. So that way to help monitor an approval of comments or turning off commenting. So that way, because I think face, the Facebook is a great way to get stuff out mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Yeah, I was say, why and, do we want comments coming back on? Right. Can, can we use it as only? a way to get messages out, but turn off the comments yes. so yes. that... Yeah. It would appear that we need to 
adopt a social media policy and then we could designate Facebook as a government speech forum only. Okay. And that, that so we need to uh, adopt a policy first. Correct? Yes, I, okay. I would say so. Um, maybe we'll let Sandy draft up a... That's what we can do if you... if. Or I can work with Sandy and to the... They have a model policy in here that we could adapt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just gives us an extra way to get information out on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. But we don't need the... We don't need the comments. The comments, because... Doesn't do anyone any good. No. We get enough on our forms. Right. <coughs> Jake, because we never run any kind of events where, like, oh, comment and to uh, be entered into a raffle or anything else like that. There's not, and if anything, really, anybody wants to really say anything about it, they can share it and then say it on their own page, but it won't be on our site. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So I guess we have to table this for now until we have the media policy and then. That would be my suggestion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody's good with that? Yeah. Yep. Opioid settlement. So we, get, we got an email basically asking us to sign a release okay. legally as part of this. Initially, when this happened, um, the select board supported just opting out of this thing. Uh, later on down the road, uh, Nelson said he had read, read through a state attorney general's documents regarding the settlement, and he thought uh, getting into it might help the state get a distribution of funds. Um, Got a small amount of money. Yeah, we've gotten a little bit of money out of it. There's a whole bunch of pages and pages of legalese that they want you to sign. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm of the mind that we just ignore it and opt out of it. What do you think? I'm thinking these are payments that go towards the many who are suffering with opioid addiction. And we know that there's people in town that have been affected by this. What, what, what do others think on it? Is it worth going through the legalese to get what looks like a small amount of money to continue getting small amounts? And, but where does the small amount of money go? Yeah, where does That's it go? a good question. Where does it go? How do you determine who gets it? I mean, it's Is just... it really helping what it says it's supposed to be helping? So the town receives this money. What do we do with this money? What it just goes in the general fund. So it's in the so general it's not fund. for what it's supposed to be for. No. So I have a problem with that. We would have to, we would have to earmark something for it to go towards. So I'm with Bruce. Okay. And I, I think we should stay right out of it. Okay. I'll go with the majority decision. Good with that, Justin, too, or? It's the only way I would think it would be worth it really is to, if we had some program where maybe it's a scholarship or something like that that people could apply for and this money could go into it. Okay. Um, just as a, because right, the, we, don't have, we want, we don't have the skill set to be able to right. say this is somebody who needs it, this is somebody who doesn't. Um, 
Yeah, um, but mm. yeah, and it's also especially if it's not the smart. Is it if it does help the state? I would be more on board, but I don't know if I, I see that. Right. Yeah. Okay. At this at this point, I think the state's got whatever they're going to get, and I'm not sure, but I, know. I just I started reading the document and. At a certain point, it was like, I don't want to bother with this anymore. It's, it's just. Like it needs to be through the organizations that actually are supporting. Yeah. You know, yeah. like the Serenity House and that. that and that's yes. who should be part of this, not us. Yes. yes. Yep. So. Okay. Good. Okay. Public records request. You've got mail. Timing on that was great. Who was that? <laughs> that wasn't me. Oh, was that that? Oh. Was that on that no, computer? Was me. Oh. <laughs> Somehow that got turned on. I can't figure out. <laughs> You've just got like a little sound button over there. You know? I haven't heard. Really, that sound like it was right here. And I could figure out how to turn it off, and you wouldn't have it. Well, it was perfect. It was like the old AOL startup. <laughs> we got a new email about public records. Right. So, where do I start with this? <laughs> um, in your previous packets, uh, Sandy included Lisa Williams' emails dealing her concerns that she did not receive all the public records from the planning commission she requested last year. She commented she was denied records and wanted to appeal. Lisa has also asked for a refund as she said she was not paid. And she for paid for information she did not receive. receive. Um, that is really not the case. She pays for the copies that she does receive. And, that, and that's it. So. Um, okay. Has she made a formal appeal? She says she's going to be making an appeal, but has she made a formal appeal? And like, how does she know it's concerning the Kevin Mullen emails? How does she know that they, she did not receive those? That's what I'm... Well, the ironic thing is that she provided examples of emails that she had from Kevin that were not in, in what she received but, from, from Julie. But she already had them in her possession. Yes. Um, but, but regardless of whether or not she had them in possession, if, yeah. we're, if, we're, if there's communications between somebody who is the representative of the town and a town member, those, me those messages should not be deleted, nor they should be sent. So if she has evidence of that and that wasn't there, I, I can see her being annoyed by that. Because if she deleted it, then right. by mistake or something like that, then... Well, I guess that's uh, our our policy says that people have to any documentation. We have to keep those messages secure, right? Uh, the policy doesn't really state anything like that. Um, the policy just states that if somebody makes a request, Julie, as the record keeper, will honor that request. Um, Julie turns around and asks everybody for that information. I mean, we have no real control over what other people do with their email. I mean, somebody gets a computer crash, they could lose all those emails. So I really don't know what we can do. I mean, I don't think there's anything we can do as far as that. The policy states that I can appeal to Julie if some if she denies somebody something, right. but Julie did not deny anybody anything. She gave what was she had. She had. So. Yeah. Um, we did send out an or Sandy sent out an email reminding everybody that emails are part of the pu public record and not to delete them. Right. Yeah, I, I guess, and I guess that's the, the main sticking point of 
doing those personal e- those personal emails for. I guess it, it wonder almost if we have to modify the policy to say like, if you get you start a conversation with somebody, you need to end it and move it to some kind of official right. kind of official way, or or any you have to keep it or send a send a copy or CC like town admin or somebody like because. Yeah, right. Group, right. You're right, Bruce. We're there. You can't be responsible for if there is a crash or if your account gets hacked. If it's a personal one, because there's so many other things that there's there. There's so many more avenues to get in. Right. We don't provide a, a set email. That's true. Mm-hmm. But it it does. It, have we talked to Kevin about his emails? I know that's not what we said, but it just it's it does feel weird that. If, she has the emails and he didn't put those in. If, even if we just got a clarification that, oh, I just missed those, that'd be fun. But it does feel weird that he, if he did, restrict some of those emails. He has. You, you explained to him, didn't you, Julie? So, uh, that Kevin sent me what he had, and I wrote to him again, at least twice, saying, She's still asking for more. And I can I can give you what he said, you know. Okay. He gave me all he had. I mean I can't do anything more. Yep. Okay. So So good faith says that he did this in good faith. Yes. Okay. There's a few other requests here. Like Yes. Well what what where do we stand with those? So as far as moving on to the second one, said she'd like to be paid money for information she did not receive. Um, she only paid for the for she, the information she, she did yeah, receive. Yeah, you only pay for what you receive. Only pay for what you what you received. So there's no money to be refunded. Well, what about the next one? She w- has been provided a copy of the employee handbook oh, okay. that she requested. Has it? Okay. We do not have a formal complaint policy. That is something that she would need to do if she's going to do it. We've covered number five. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to refund money. What about number six? Those are personnel issues. Uh, Yes. I was wondering on that. And I mean, seven is a flat-out no. Yes. I mean... Both of them. I mean, they're just both. Gotcha. I wasn't sure in number six, but. Yeah. I mean, all we have to do is just draft a letter and reply back to her on the answers to these questions. And yes. End it. Sounds good. So oh, think, what did you say, Mark? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I just said we just draft a letter, send it back to Lisa, and yes. with the answers to her questions and and end it because it's what she's asking for. She's either got or can't have, so. Right. My suggestion would be that we send it certified mail, just so she can't say that she did not get a reply from us. Yep, I agree. I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's under the assumption that we did nothing, we took no actions on her previous. Right. Emails, which was not the case. We had an executive session with our council, yes. and whatever actions we're taking after that are not for public record. So, right. sounds good. Select board comments or concerns. And Bruce, just one more thing. I'd like to also make it just so Bruce that letter when it comes out just. Bruce can sign it as chairman of the select board mm-hmm. and send it. So we that sounds to good. Wait for another two yeah. weeks to get it out. Right. Just send it. Sounds good. Yeah, agreed. I wonder if you should do email and certified mail so that way. I think certified mail will be enough. Well, so you can prove certified mail just means she's gotten a letter. It doesn't say what was in the envelope. Well, we can CC and keep a copy of it on file here. I'm, I'm just covering both bases, in, you know, like saying. Yeah sent per email and certified mail this so that way 
what we think. Do we need to take that step or? The public oh, record either way, so. Yeah. Right. I'm, I know, I'm just. Yeah. It's just every time Sandy gives her an answer, it just prompts another barrage of emails and. Okay. I think it was just a thought just to. A certified mail doesn't specify what's in it. <laughs> if that was the concern. Right. No one hear what you're saying. Yeah. So what were comments or concerns? Do we have anything anybody wants to bring up? Guess not. <laughs> Hearing none, we'll move on. Other business? Uh, the first time I met with the uh, superintendent today. Go ahead, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we met with the superintendent today. That was an interesting exchange. Um, <laughs> One of his comments in the course of our discussion was that, I mean, we talked to him about the fact that for several years now, it's been a problem getting the, the elementary school, but uh, in the course of the conversation, he brought up the fact that, well, we don't charge you for the use of the building, which was kind of dumbfounded me because, you know, I mean, about the time we told the townspeople that uh, the school system was going to charge us for the use of the building for town meeting, I'm sure there'd be a riot. Um, in the end, anyway, we he stated that they would try their best to accommodate us in the future, and we made plans to, uh, next December, have a meeting just to finalize the plans for setting up for town meeting. If you'd like to add anything, Sandy, feel free. I think that's good. Um, I, I just, when we, I got back and I just, I, I didn't realize that the town had signed over a quick claim deed of the school to the district for a dollar. They did? Yes. Yeah, the town. Oh, this element of the um, school board, did, the elementary school board. I, it was it was signed by a school board member. I mean, that's was all part of it. I just I don't think I don't know. I don't think people realize that no. what happened at the time. No. I mean, it was ago. all done at public meetings and everything. So yes. I mean, it's legitimate. I just yeah. I didn't. I don't think we knew that it wasn't going to be Wallencrid's little school until the first time we went to use it after the merge. And yeah. you had to go through a lot of layers. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. So that happened pre-school school board merge? What's that? When did the quick claim happen? Before the merge of schools? 2016, during, during the whole merge. During the whole merge. As part of the merge. Yeah, I just looked that up when I get back. So. Well, I guess uh, it's a good swap to have the uh, cross-country meet here. Right. For the use of the hall or the school for... Yeah. Years. Someone yeah. suggested I should remind them of that, that the road crew had been snow plowing their parking lot for years for free. And I didn't think of that at the time. Right. But it's all good. We're going to work on it next year. We're going to put the application in tomorrow. <laughs> there we are. There's taxes in. Oh, I'm asking if they are. Even if the town does not own that anymore. Yes. Okay. The other thing that's... Sandy had talked to VLCT about whether the Wallingford Day event required event insurance. 
I guess probably everyone's read the exchange, mm -hmm. but uh, I think not necessarily tonight, but maybe in the, at the next meeting, we need to have a discussion that make a formal decision that Wyford Day is going to become a subcommittee of REC or not. Mm -hmm. And if it does, they need to start following all the rules of a committee where they have a chair, they have agendas posted, they take minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that we are covered under VLCT's yeah. Yeah. policy. So. Sounds good. I think Can we make a request to have them hand the um, rec committee back next, at the meeting, next meeting? Do we need the rec committee or just the one? Well, it's the subcommittee under the rec committee. So both? So probably the chair of this rec committee. And Sumio. Sumio. Just, just to make sure they understand. Yeah. Okay. Because they're ultimately responsible for following the open meeting laws and such. So. Um, oh. And then finally, I guess uh, Pig Soul said at town meeting the Art Committee would like to forward recommendations to the Select Board in April. So. Great. We should be seeing that pretty soon. Mm -hmm. We're going to set up some agreements. Mm -hmm on how we're going to oversee okay. who gets what once, once the money starts that. to get distributed. So. Okay. With that, okay. I'll take. I will make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.